Sacramento is tagged in to join the party. Picks up first, picks up second. Is he gonna live? I think so. Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 2017 EU LCS Spring Split. It's do or die here in Berlin as we bring you the last week of cross-group play. Tonight, the bottom four teams are battling for survival. Earlier today, we saw Vitality and Giants taking to the stage, getting ready for their showdown to find security here, and some cosplayers as well. Hello, everyone. I'm Daniel Dracos, and joining also me at the analyst desk... Huh? We also cosplayers. We are also cosplayers. Yes. We're cosplaying qualified analysts. I'm Daniel Dracos. I like that. This is Martin DeFisher, and you're yes, welcome, everyone. And this is Doom's Week, <laughs> because these teams, they gotta win, man. It's now or never. I mean, it absolutely is. Let's take a chance then to look at the standings. Groups A and B, it is the last week of cross groups play. When we look at it, you can see the top is still the top, the bottom is still the bottom, but now that we're more than halfway through the split, yes. those bottom teams have to be scared. Yeah, and these bottom teams, you know, they're not really getting wins anywhere else, but when they play each other, last time Giants won, it was against Rocket. Last time Vitality won, it was against Origin, funny enough. They have not beaten the top six teams. So we're looking at them now this week when they play each other, especially today when we have some very, very interesting matchups. Well, it is a four day week this week. So let's take a chance to look at the entire schedule throughout the rest of this. So as you mentioned, bottom teams fighting each yes. other. We're gonna see that a lot through the course of the week, but we also have some top matchups. Misfits versus H2K gonna be exciting. G2 versus Splice. Splice not quite as top as they once were, but still interesting to see. Oh, so very interesting. I like the fact that we have the top six teams against each other and the bottom four against each other. Again, it, it's very different matchups. But they all mean a lot. Like, a lot of teams are fighting for position around playoffs, and then the other teams are fighting to survive and keep their spot in the LCS. Well, it's interesting how hard it's been for the bottom teams this time around. I feel like we always have one or two bottom teams, but never yeah. has it been, I think, this bad. Only two series wins across all four of our bottom teams is, is kind of a grim place for them to be at this stage. It's crazy. Like, again, they lost 26 series. You highlight the two they won. And again, it's shown how one-sided it's been. And this is why it's important to get that breath of life by, like, getting that one victory, because we know these teams are not going to win a whole lot of games, so one or two wins this week can basically mean you're out of the promotion tournament. Which is all too crucial. Well, let's take a chance then to look at today's schedule, focusing on our first matchup, which is going to be, of course, Vitality versus Giants. Now, this is an interesting one for me. Once mm -hmm. again, battle the bottom teams, but Vitality look like they've been kind of improving here over the last few weeks. Yeah, I feel like there's two reasons we, we kind of feel like they've been improving. Uh, one, against G2, they had like a fairly good early to mid game where they were actually staying somewhat even against them, but then they would sadly like lose after. And then I also feel like it's kind of based around the names on Vitality. Like you hear a couple shots, steal back, nuke duck, and you don't think to yourself, oh yeah, relegation team. No, you kind of go like, yeah, these guys, you know, pretty good names, big names in Europe. They should not be fighting with some of these other teams down here, but Sadly, yeah, we can't when we say look the at the player. performance, I mean, the names may be big, but the players do not look exactly. comfortable right now. They do not exactly. look good. And They're so, surviving on the name at the moment. Not where you want to be. Maybe today is a chance for them to build it back up, but this is a good time for us to look at the mid lane matchup. Nuke Duck coming in once again, Vitality sticking to the same roster. Now facing down across from Nike. I mean, what are your thoughts on Nuke Duck right now in this team, in this lineup? Well, I've seen uh, Nuke Duck get some flack from the community, and I think it's not really deserved. I don't think he's the guy you should target if you want to criticize anyone on Vitality, because he is one of the most important members. Like, not only does he deal, like, the highest amount of damage on his team, which is obviously an important thing right now, he's also consistently doing well or fine in the laning phase. He doesn't really fall behind uh, at all in these games. And most importantly, he's a shot caller. Like, he's actually a very important vocal member on this team. He's always been that kind of player since Season 3 when I used to play against him, and he was really hard to deal with. So, 
it's weird in a sense that GBM is not being used at all because when they had GBM, he was very proactive. He forced a lot of plays. You know, you can swap him in after you may be going down 0-1 in a series. But Nuke Dog is just kind of the consistent rock on, on Vitality, and that's why they can't really swap him out. And it's interesting, too, because on the opposite side, the consistent rock for Giants last split was Max Floor and Knight. And while they do have another great jungler on their mm -hmm. team in Memento, a guy who's kind of surprised us over the course of his uh, appearances in the LCS, yeah. Knight is down and out recently. And really, I feel like it's all on Memento now. And I think that's why Memento has to play this very selfish style where he becomes the carry. Like, he becomes the guy who you kind of rely on to win you games. And it's not as a ganking jungler specifically. It's more like he's very skirmish heavy, you know, Graves and Karzix are two big picks for him. You can see in the stat here on the screen, you know, like, while there's a high kill participation, there's also a really high damage percent for a jungler. He's the jungler who deals the most, like, has the highest damage percent out of all junglers in EU LCS. Obviously, also because some of the other members on his team is not doing a whole lot. But it's very different style if you look at Joko, who's very like, I need to snowball my lanes. I need to snowball my carries. Joko is very active in the early game. He's part of the most first spots in the LCS. Sadly, his carries have not really picked it up. But it's fun to see like you have like one guy who's like, yeah, I'm going to enable my, my carries, the big names on my team. And then you have the other guy in Memento who's like, no, I need to enable myself. I need to be the guy who wins this game for my team. Okay, so we've already talked a little bit about, you know, Joko needing to enable someone. We brought up Nuke Duck earlier. Is that who we want to see Joko ganking for, Joko setting up for success? Where, where does he need to give his attention to make sure that Vitality can find a win here? Because Nuke Duck does not really fall behind in lane, you do not need to play around him. Couple shot on a carry in a Renekton meta, or steal back, getting, you know, a few ganks early on, get an early tower, and then he becomes the carry in team fights. That, in my opinion, is the way to go for Vitality, because you know Nuke Dog is going to be fine against Knight. Knight has not been performing too well, even though he's the rookie of the split of last year. So I want to see Cabo Shot on a carry. I want to see Joko around him at first, get him rolling, and then set up steal back for success. And if you're Giants, you got to obviously prevent that. And one of the ways to do it is flashes up in that top lane. Needs to show that a new name is currently as good as an old big name like Capo Shot. Flaxis plays a lot of different champions. Give him a last pick and see if he can counter pick Capo Shot and maybe shut him down. Well, I'm curious here, at the end of the day, what does this victory really mean for either side? What are we looking at when it comes to stakes? I mean, it means everything. You know, there is one, the confidence, the fact that you break a losing streak for both teams. Also, the fact that the team underneath you is sitting on zero wins. So by you obviously getting another win now, you kind of get a bit of a buffer. Two wins now between you and these like Rocket or Origin teams. And that can be important when it comes to just avoiding relegation. Because I think all four teams are not necessarily looking at playoffs. For now, it's to save your behind. <laughs> and then see if you can maybe aim for playoffs later on. All right. Well, it's an explosive week, and we want to hear from you. Let us know who out of the bottom four teams is going to stay safe in the EU LCS and why. Tweet at LO Esports using the hashtag EU LCS. Who's going to get it? Why? Maybe what players are going to carry it home for them? We'll see who fights harder to keep themselves safe here in the EU LCS as we send it over to the caster desk for game one between Giants and Vitality.